We all know the importance of a healthy heart for our physical health and well-being. But brain health is just as crucial for us to live a healthy life now and look after our longevity going forward. What do we actually mean by brain health? And how can we look after this amazing machine between our ears? So today I'm going to share the six pillars of a healthy brain. episode 22 of Better Brain, Better You, where we're cultivating healthy brains, whatever your stage of life. So I'm your host, Dr. Ben Webb. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. So I always struggle with my motivation at this time of the year. Christmas is a distant memory. It's dark when I start and finish work and the longer and lighter days of spring seem a long way off. So more than ever at this time of the year, I think it's really important not to neglect your brain health and well-being. And today I want to unpack what we mean by brain health and share the six pillars of maintaining a healthy brain. So the pillars of brain health will apply to you whatever your age, from the teenage years right through to the latter stages of life. But before we get started, if you're interested in increasing your awareness and your understanding of your brain health and its really important connection to your well-being... We've designed a free mini course to help you get started on this journey. The mini course called Brain Health and Wellbeing is completely free. So please do go and sign up for the course at ologyonlinecourses.com forward slash brain health. That's ologyonlinecourses.com forward slash brain health. And if you're watching on YouTube, I will make sure that I pin the link in the comments below. So maintaining a healthy brain during your life is really your most important goal in pursuing your health now and your longevity going forward. The human brain is the command center of you and your body. It's an incredibly complex organ and has at least three levels of function that affect all aspects of daily life. It interprets your senses and controls your movement. It maintains your cognition, mental and emotional processes and it maintains normal behaviour and your social connections with other people. So when we talk about brain health, we're trying to preserve optimal brain, mental and cognitive function for a given age and avoid brain diseases that affect normal brain function and behaviour. And there are numerous brain disorders which can really disrupt your brain function and and affect your health. And you can put those into three different groups. So there are brain diseases that cause damage to the brain, such as stroke, traumatic brain injury, brain tumours, meningitis and communication and sensory disorders. And then there are functional brain disorders that destroy brain connections. So this is things like Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease and other dementias and mental disorders such as schizophrenia, depression, bipolar disorder and alcoholism and drug abuse. And finally, there are brain disorders where there's no detectable brain damage such as migraine and sleep disorders. And each of these types of brain disorders may have different or the same effects on your brain health and function. So for example, Alzheimer's disease is the main type of dementia where we see a decline in your cognitive and mental function. Mood disorders may cause problems in emotional regulation and stroke can lead to physical disability, language problems, balance problems, but also cognitive impairment and dementia. So what are the six pillars of, to help you maintain a healthy brain and avoid these types of brain, damages, brain damage and disease? Well, first is physical exercise. The Global Council on Brain Health has three recommendations on how to use physical exercise to improve your brain health. So do at least 150 minutes of weekly moderate intensity aerobic activity and two or more days a week of moderate intensity muscle strengthening activities. Lead a physically active lifestyle throughout the day and identify meaningful and enjoyable ways to increase and maintain physical activity. There isn't a perfect exercise. The activity you should focus on is the one that you enjoy most because then you'll keep on doing it. So for example, activities that involve complex movements like tennis, yoga, pilates, dance, golf are really good for your brain health. Challenge yourself a bit as well, a little bit more over time, for example. If you're not very active, start stretching and walking at a leisurely pace. And if you're already a walker or a jogger, 
increase your pace or distance. And if you're an active runner, keep running and start strength resistance training. Aerobic exercise helps to grow new brain cells and learning sports that involve complex movements protect those brain cells from damage and disease. So the second pillar of brain health is mental exercise and learning. Feed your curiosity, learn new things and expose yourself to new situations. Studies show that an attitude of growth can have a positive impact on your brain health. You can affect how your brain changes as you get older. So by learning a foreign language, picking up a new hobby and feeding your curiosity, building emotional fitness, you're exercising your brain by challenging it to learn and adapt to new things. You're building up what we call cognitive reserve. So cognitive reserve builds extra capacity and resilience against the overt and debilitating symptoms of brain damage and disease like Alzheimer's and dementia. But the key here is not just to engage in mentally challenging activities, but rather to engage in new learning, new learning activities. So the third pillar is a healthy diet and nutrition. Every bite of food you eat either depletes or nourishes your brain. The wrong foods can leave you with brain fog, anxiety and depression, whereas the right foods help to sharpen your mental faculties and increase positivity and productivity. Certain foods are particularly high in the nutrients needed to create, protect and, and repair brain cells. And other foods also supply the building blocks of brain chemicals that control how, you, how well you learn, how well you remember, how happy and motivated you are, and how well you can relax and enjoy life. So brain foods that are rich in essential brain nutrients will protect against a variety of mental disorders now and degenerative brain diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's in the years to come. So the fourth pillar of brain health is social interaction. Having a strong social circle, connecting with friends, volunteering in your community and maintaining family ties is really good for your brain health. The research suggests that having close ties to friends and family and participating in meaningful social activities can help maintain your thinking skills much now and much better later in life and then also slows down mental decline later in life as well. So people who are socially engaged appear to have a lower risk of dementia. And the numbers of social connections and the type, quality and purpose of relationships can affect brain function. So better social engagement does appear to be good for your brain health as well. And research has shown that loneliness, unfortunately, actually increases your risk of mental decline. Meaningful interactions with others seems to provide a buffer against more harmful impacts on your brain, such as stress. So it's not unusual for social networks to change at different times of our lives, but there are things that we can do to improve the quality of our relationships. Join a club, a class, or a social group to meet new people. Focus on relationships or enjoy activities that you enjoy. If you've lost connections, take small steps to start rebuilding them. And in these difficult times at the moment, talking and playing games over Zoom and Skype can be a really useful way to expand your social world as well as to maintain existing contacts. So the fifth pillar is res restorative sleep and relaxation. Sleep is essential to our overall mental, emotional and physical well-being. Brain processes that occur during sleep have a profound impact on our brain health. They influence mood, energy level, cognitive and emotional fitness. Numerous studies have shown that changes that occur in the brain during sleep affect our capacity for new learning as well as the strength of memories formed during the day. So sleep promotes the consolidation of experience, experiences and ideas and dreams act as a form of nocturnal therapy, stripping away those negative emotions from our memories as we sleep. But sleep is also pivotal for memory and has been shown to enhance attention, problem solving and creativity. And chronic sleep deprivation may may increase our risk of developing memory problems and dementia. So during the night when we sleep, refuse collecting brain cells clear away the waste products built up inside the brain during the day. One of these waste products is the sticky protein beta amyloid, which actually causes Alzheimer's disease. So chronic sleep deprivation prevents beta amyloid from being cleared away. And gradually over many years, more and more of this sticky protein accumulates inside the brain increasing our risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. So you can see why sleep is so pivotal for our brain and our emotional health. 
So the sixth and final pillar is good blood flow to the brain itself. So healthy blood flow is crucial to the health of your brain. It transports nutrients, including oxygen, to every cell in your body and flushes away toxins. Even though your brain, which weighs about three pounds, makes up only 2% of your body's weight, it actually uses an incredible 20% of the oxygen and blood flow in your body. So when the blood supply is interrupted or blocked, your brain can become damaged. So less oxygen and glucose reach your brain, which can cause a stroke, a brain hemorrhage, swelling on the brain, or even vascular dementia. So anyone at any age can have problems with the blood supply to their brain, but your risk increases as you get older. So you're at an increased risk of having these problems if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, diabetes, you smoke, or you drink large quantities of alcohol. But you can lower your risk if you damage of damage to your brain by maintaining a healthy weight, eating a brain, eating a brain healthy diet, exercising regularly, avoiding smoking, and limiting your alcohol intake. So they are the six pillars of brain health. And if your lifestyle incorporates habits, behaviors, and activities that promote these pillars, you're giving yourself the best chance of a healthy and happy life now and will significantly re reduce your risk of developing brain damage and disease later in life. So before we finish, if you're interested in increasing your awareness and understanding of your brain health and its important connection to your well-being, we've designed a free mini course to help you get started on this journey. The mini course called Brain Health and Wellbeing is completely free, so please do go, and, go and sign up for the course at ologyonlinecourses.com forward slash brain health. That's ologyonlinecourses.com forward slash brain health. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'll make sure to pin the link in the comments below. So thank you so much for spending time with me today. I really do appreciate hanging out with you. I hope you found this episode useful. And if you did, please do leave me a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you consume your podcasts. And I look forward to seeing you next time. 